the I Am Rappaport Stereo, Stereo Podcast, Podcast. Live. Live. You're down with Rappaport? Yes, I am. 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 You're yes, I am. You better tune in, I am Rappaport.com. Cause every single podcast, you know he drops bombs. I seen him on set, a seasoned vet with true talent. Catch him on his way to CrossFit, rocking the new balance. He asked me to do the track, cause he know I rhyme elite. But I'm just waiting for the Robert De Niro line of the, of the week. week. Breakfast of champions, toasted bagel, cream, cream cheese, and lox. This is I am Rappaport, the show never stops. You might catch him out in public, stretching his knees. But if you don't listen to the show, yo, wiggle please. Wiggle, 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 wiggle please. This is the I all right, this is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Let me tell you something. Okay, this is a cold opening before I call uh, G Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. LeBron James, you've done it again. You whiny, diaper-wearing baby. LeBron blames. You complained publicly. I need a playmaker. We need a playmaker. We need this. We need that. They bring in Kyle Korver. An all-star. What does he do? He wins you the game last night in Washington. Of course, LeBron James made the incredible three-point play to get them into overtime. But when they got into overtime, Kyle Korver, your new playmaker. Kyle Korver is a playmaker. Okay, three-point plays, clutch three-point plays. Those are big plays that need to be made, and he makes them. You're complaining after the game. You did The whole thing is a joke. I'm, I'm so upset about this. I'm so he said, I need a playmaker. I need a playmaker a couple of weeks ago. Then the big beef with him and Charles Barkley happened. And Charles Barkley eventually backed off the whole thing. Because it got personal. And LeBron James said, I'm the I'm the new sheriff. And he started getting personal with Charles Barkley. And then Shaq, Kenny, and those guys at TNT, they squashed it. And then now the trade rumors come in because LeBron said he needs a playmaker. Okay? My diaper's wet. I need a playmaker. So now the Cleveland Cavaliers are scrounging around trying to get them a playmaker. So now you get all the trade rumors. So last night and this last couple of games, Kevin Love's been kicking ass. So when asked what happens if Kevin Love gets traded, can you see the Cleveland Cavaliers without Kevin Love? LeBron James, he's all indicative. He's all defiant. No, I can't see them without Kevin Love. That rumor's trash about the Carmelo rumor. Just like last year this time with the rumors about David Blatt. I don't know. I just work here. I don't know. I just work here. You got to talk to management. You got to talk to the higher ups. You think we're stupid, LeBron James? Everything goes through you. You're the most successful player in the NBA. You're the face of the NBA. You, you, You just work there. Cut the shit, man. You asked for a playmaker. Now you got to deal with the trade rumors. Now when Kevin Love, if Kevin Love winds up getting traded, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Of course he wants Carmelo Anthony there, but he loves Kevin Love. But you can't have it both ways. See, that's what happens, little spoiled uh, AAU brat. You can't have it both ways. Either your boy Carmelo is going to come to the Cleveland Cavaliers and they're going to give up Kevin Love or Kevin Love's going to stay. But you cannot have it both ways. And then when asked the question, be a fucking man, okay? You're 33 years old. You got a full-grown beard. We may or may not be able to verify whether or not you wear a diaper and it got soiled when you said, we need a playmaker, we need a playmaker. All right? Now when they ask about it, it's trash. Call my man Frank Isola, trash. These rumors are trash. You started this shit. Everybody's running around with their heads between their legs trying to satisfy you because they don't want to deal with your next Twitter rant, your next social media rant, or the next time you're going to go public and say, we need a playmaker. We need, they got your fucking playmaker. Now either Kevin Love's going to get traded or he ain't going to get traded. And what the fuck are you going to say then? Hashtag David Blatt. Hashtag David Blatt because last year this fucking time, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just work here. I don't know. That's management. That's ownership. You wanted David Blatt fired, and you're fucking lucky. You were fantastic in the NBA Finals last year. Of course, you were fantastic. Game seven, all right? But that game could have went either way, and we'd still be talking about David Blatt. You, LeBron James, you have the blood, the DNA of David Blatt still on your hands. Don't front. You know I got you open, to quote the great Black Moon, okay? 
You can't have it both ways. You wanted a playmaker? Now they're going to get you a fucking playmaker. And Kevin Love is going to be the one to go. What the fuck are you going to say to Kevin Love? They traded everybody for Kevin Love. Anthony, Andrew Wiggins is an all-star. You, you couldn't wait. You needed it immediately. Just like you needed it immediately when you went to Miami. I'm so sick of this guy, LeBron James. You want to be a politician? Run for office. You could be Trump. But when you're in the NBA, you're in the fucking NBA. Another thing. Before I call Moody, Martellus Bennett of the Bennett Brothers, NFL, championship New England Patriots. We're going to get into my Super Bowl pain. He said after the game, no, I ain't going to the, to the White House. I'm not, I'm not going to the White House. He, he, he's been very politically and socially conscious and active, and, 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 and him and his brother, they don't, they, don't, they don't hold their tongue. And as soon as after the words of the game, he, he said, after they won the Super Bowl, no, I'm not going to the White House. And now the disgust comes out. The Richard Spence, the Breitbarts, the animals, even the Patriots fans. How dare you? You don't show up to the, to the White House. The racial slurs, the disgusting racial shit that's coming at Michael Martellus Bennett now. Due to knowledge, the last time the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Check it out. Fact check it. Break cardinal rule number one of the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast. I posted the picture. The Minister of Defense, Mr. Morris, posted the picture. Google it. New England Patriots. Seattle uh, Seahawks, they won the Super Bowl. Guess who did not show up to the White House last time? Not a peep was made when Obama was still in office. Tom fucking Brady, Mr. Wonderful, Captain America, did not show up to the White House. He said, the excuse was, I had family time commitments. Family time commitments? What are you, fucking nine? Would you have a little birthday party to go to? Turned out he was a liar. That same day, while his team was at the White House meeting the 44th president of the United States, the great President Barack Obama, Tom Brady, this is a fact, was in the Apple store trying on Apple watches. You lying fuck you. This is why Roger Goodell nabbed you for four games, because you can't be trusted you want to try on Apple Watches instead of going to meet the President of the United States, you fuck you, and then people want to get their little vaginas all upset, their panties all in a ruffle when Martellus Bennett says, no, I'm not going to the White House. Let me tell you something. Get used to it. This is going to be the, the, the least amount of players are going to be showing up to meet President Trump during the next four years. If, if, if the Cleveland Cavaliers... Win the NBA championship. How many of those guys you think are showing up to the White House? If the Warriors win, how many of those guys you think are showing up at the White House? Players are not going to show up to meet Donald Trump. Get used to it. There's going to be football teams. There's going to be like 26 guys there. Okay? Steve Kerr might not show up to meet Donald Trump. He has spoken openly about Donald Trump. You think Stan Van Gundy is going to show up to the White House? I'm not going to the White House. I don't give a fuck. Now, listen, we know the Detroit Pistons are not winning a championship anytime soon. But if Stan Van Gundy and the Detroit Pistons pulled off a miracle, can you imagine Stan Van Gundy showing up to the White House? Listen, I'm going down to Puerto Rico. Just tell him I had a prior engagement. I, I got four whores. I got the championship trophy. I, I, I can't look at him face to face. I can't. I, I got a bag of weed. And a couple of bags of Coke, we're going to get nuts. I'm not saying I use the weed and the Coke. I'm not saying I don't. I got a couple of hookers. I just, I just tell them I couldn't make it. Get used to it. People aren't fucking with Trump. People are offended by Trump. The majority of the athletes in the NBA, NFL, black young men, they're not fucking with Trump. Okay? But. Due to knowledge, the last time the Patriots won the Super Bowl, Tom fucking Brady, Captain America, Mr. Wonderful, did not show up to meet the great Barack Obama. Okay, why? You went to try on a fucking Apple Watch. You think you could just go around and people aren't going to see you and then connect the dots? No, 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 you freak. You're trying on an Apple Watch instead of meeting the president? 
And then people are mad because Martellus Bennett ain't showing up? Get used to it. It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. I'm calling G. Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. Next. The I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattress, an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. You can try a Casper mattress for 100 nights risk-free in your home. If you do not love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. With over 20,000 reviews online and an average of 4.8 stars, Casper is quickly becoming the Internet's most popular mattress. They have sheets. They have pillows. They even have doggy beds. Go to Casper.com. Save $50 towards any mattress purchased by visiting www.casper.com forward slash Rappaport. Use the promo code Rappaport. Try a Casper mattress 100 nights risk-free in your home. If you don't love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. Go to www.casper.com forward slash Rappaport. All right. This is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. My name is uh, Michael Rapaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. the Human Phlegm Machine. Yes. I'm in the gloom tomb with uh, G. Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. Uh, the correct. man whose prostate is still in the rapper. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> listen, I'm going to tell you people, I'm going to be honest. There were plans... Okay, there were big, big, big plans that got uh, canceled the other day. We, we, we were planning to dance all over the New England Patriots and their fucking fans with an emergency podcast. By the way, by the way, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast are the originators of the concept of emergency podcast. I'm not naming names. Okay, but since we did our first emergency podcast a few years ago, uh, some people have decided to take that on their own. Well, what we're going to do now, you fucks, you biters, is we're going to patent emergency podcast. Okay, we're going to patent it because we know you're listening. We know you're biting, steady biting. Uh, and we're going to patent the term emergency podcast so it can no longer be used because we started it. We created that, it. A lot of our correct. shit keeps getting bitten. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and all we ask for is some credit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. But now, now uh, you, you're going to have to deal with two, not one, two hook nosed Jew lawyers. Okay. <laughs> we're going to start patenting all this shit. And then, and then I got two hook-nosed Jew lawyers on standby out in Queens that are ready to rumble. The kind of hook-nosed Jew lawyers that wear, that wear cheap suits with pride. Okay? Mm-hmm. Those kind of hook-nosed Jew lawyers. <laughs> okay? So I'm going to be honest. I was ready to go. I had <clears throat> the microphones and the podcast equipment all fired up, warmed yep. up, and ready to go. As soon as... As the Patriots lost, I was standing by, ready to go. I was going to talk about the desperation of the New England Patriots. I was going to talk about the flea flicker attempts and everything that went wrong and how Tom Brady was marginalized and how fuck you, you're not the greatest of all time, how you choked in a Super Bowl again. How the defensive coach, what's his name, uh, Matt Patricia, is that his name? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, how he looks like a homeless guy who just escaped a methadone clinic but forgot to take the pencil out of his ear. How they had drones above the practice field in Atlanta. Everything was going great. I was ielloing the shit out of them. It's all over the internet. My ielos went viral again, of course. I was talking big shit. I said I wanted to have a, an open forum podcast. I wanted to invite Bill Burr, Mark Wahlberg, all the Wahlbergs, Ben Affleck, Dennis Leary, Matt Damon, and all of New Edition and Johnny Gill for an open forum Break His Fucking Face Part 2, the Tom Brady Edition podcast. And lo and behold, uh, uh, we, we, we know how things have worked out. It, it, it's taken us 
this many days to recover to actually yeah. pull it together to do a podcast. So, listen, we're not fools. They're the best. They did it again. Now they have voodoo working on them. Yeah. Uh, they've won two Super Bowls uh, in the last, you know, seconds, minutes of games. Yeah. Uh, you felt the tide changing. Uh, it's been covered all over the news, internet. We know what the fuck happened. Yeah, uh, it's painful. Uh, but I, but but uh, they're champions. The fucking New England Patriots are champions. Uh, uh, they should be lucky that Eli Manning wasn't in the building. You fucks you. Yeah. Uh, they didn't take my advice. The Atlanta Falcons. They didn't. They didn't have Eli Manning on the sidelines. <laughs> they didn't the do Falcons. that. Falcons. Ain't shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll get to you, Mr. Fucking, Mr. fucking Predictions, in a minute. Okay. I'll get to you. I'll let you have the form in a minute. Okay. okay because when the, when the fourth quarter started, I was texting G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty, the only man whose prostate is still in the wrapper. That's and, for sure. And, and, and nothing. I, I've always said they're great. Doesn't mean I have to like them. I've always said they're great, but now they're truly, 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 truly on some other shit. And going into next season, they have to be the favorites to win again because Tom Brady has not slowed down. Even though he got banged around and stuffed real nice during the Super Bowl, he wasn't hurt. He took some some good shots. He didn't take any massive shots. He was never out of the game. He was never injured. And he'll be back next year because that's the kind of fucking guy he is. Mm Mm-hmm. Bill Belichick, I never seen him talk so much, which proves his little shtick that he does with the p- reporters is in fact shtick. He gave yeah. a great interview to Chris Berman after the game. Totally articulate. I even saw that he had teeth. I thought this fucking guy, the reason why he didn't speak is because he had no teeth. He's got a nice set of choppers. I don't know if they're real, but uh, they're nice. They're white. And, and, and furthermore, this whole Roger Godell thing, Like we said in the last episode, the only people that give a fuck about Roger Goodell being a good commissioner or not a good commissioner are Boston, New England Patriots fans, and Ray Rice. (laughs) The general average to above average football fan could give a fuck what kind of commissioner Roger Goodell is. We don't (laughs) give a fuck. And and now they're like, they all booed Goodell at the trophy yeah. ceremony. You're real classy, you fucking animals. You won the Super Bowl and you're booing Roger Goodell. They, they're, they're still thinking like this was some sort of conspiracy to yeah. keep Tommy down. Yeah. He won. Tommy's the best, man. What could we say? I don't know why they say? got such a hard on. They got such stiff ones for Roger Goodell. Your guy was ready, he was able, and he was rested when he came back. You should be thankful. Who knows what could have happened in those first four games. Nobody gives a shit about what, whether Roger Goodell is a good commissioner or not a good commissioner, except for fucking Patriots fans and Ray Rice and his family. Nobody else gives a shit. Dude, these guys, I mean, these guys going, oh, Roger Goodell this and Roger Goodell. Who gives a shit about Roger Goodell? Now you... You, Mr. Uh, Mr. Predictions, Mr. fucking, uh, you know, Crystal Ball, Mr. Co-host Radamus, you quote-unquote predicted the Falcons would beat the Patriots. The week before, you quote-unquote predicted the Steelers would beat the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we were all texting during the game, the whole Iron I'm, Rapport I'm a- Stereo podcast group, Miles Davis, Jordan Winter, producer extraordinaires, and we were talking shit. And G. Moody was like, I told you, I told you, I told you. And then the fourth quarter, about eight minutes into the quarter, I texted G. Moody. I go, what's your prediction now, asshole? And then like four minutes left in the fourth quarter, what's your prediction now, asshole? Overtime started. What's your prediction now, asshole? I get nothing from, from, from my co-host. We've been podcasting since 1982. Where were you during the fourth quarter, Mr. Predictions? <laughs> Uh, I was watching the game unfold, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe that these fucking guys was going to be the biggest choke job. I couldn't believe that. They didn't score again. They had 28. And they, the guy who called the play to, for, them, for them to what pass the ball when they should have kicked the field goal to win the game should be fired. 
He lost the game. Let's okay, but you didn't predict all that, Mr. Fucking Mr. I told predictions. Him I, I, I fucked up. My predictions, I'm in a lull. But my average is great. Well, your, your, your Donald Trump prediction carries a lot of weight. And, and then that'll be the one you remembered for. But your general overall predictions, they kind of suck. Now, nah, now do, nah, you, nah, you, do you nah. have any message for, for, for the Atlanta Falcons and the Atlanta fans? They let you down. They made you look bad. Do you yo, have any specific message? Yo, I have a lot to say. I have to say, yo, on the big stage... You have to win. Now, this could fuck your franchise up for 30 years. This is hard to come back from. So what I want to tell you is take your mumbling rap and take your fucking weird clothes and you get the fuck out of Houston. (laughs) You got to win on the big stage. The Giants, we're the only team that could beat these fucking guys. New Yorkers, that's why we still talk shit. (laughs) Ha! We fucked them so good twice, man. I I, I, want to tell you people... I started drinking tea with like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. No bullshit. That's what I do to relax. I was on such a fucking high from the Yo. ass kicking that was going on. I started drinking tea to calm down. And then and, 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 and it was like, it was literally like a horror movie. It was like the a fucking owner, horror movie, man. The owner is in the press box doing the fucking huckle buck as if it's over. You can tell people who, who have never been in some shit like that. <laughs> And why are you doing the, the hucklebuck? Well, I don't know what the owner uh, of the Atlanta Falcons name. He's got a great reputation. Why, why the fuck are you dancing? That old guy was on the sidelines from the beginning of the second half. He probably hasn't stood that long in years. Yeah. Lucky that fucking guy didn't fall down out there. I, I mean, that guy could have caught a fucking stroke. Uh, the biggest choke, bigger than the Bills going to four straight and losing. You up 28 to three in the fourth was it yo, i thought it was 28 10 28 10 right yeah but yeah nine nah, it doesn't but, matter yo, what the fuck it was oh listen we don't fact check hey, at the shit. iron Rapport stereo podcast okay that's another thing we're gonna patent along with the emergency podcast and whether it was 28 to 9 28 to 10 you know what the fuck it was we yeah. weren't even able to podcast from my heart was broken and some people oh, I thought, what are you a falcons fan no fuck no, I'm not. Yeah. But I don't like these fucking guys. I'm yeah. not going to call them cheaters. I'm not going to make any excuses. No. Like I said before, you know, like, you know, we, we brought this up last year. You try to mad shame me. They're like, you mad, bro? Yes, I'm fucking mad. I'm fucking mad. I'm really mad. My team didn't win. My team being the Atlanta fucking Falcons. The team that I didn't want to win won. Yes, I'm mad. How dare you try to mad shame me? Right. Okay? (laughs) How dare you try to mad shame me? Mad is an emotion like joy, like pleasure, like pain. Don't let anybody try to mad shame you. Embrace the fact that you're pissed the fuck off no matter what it is, people. Say I'm Rapport Stereo Podcast. We'll be right back. You know, the people have spoken. We are a five-star podcast. We've even got soft-ass t-shirts to prove it. Anytime you hear something on the I Am Rappaport podcast that is five-star worthy, go to iTunes and give us five-star reviews. You can do it as many times as you want. Leave us a review. We see everything. Ask a question. ILO us. Whatever you want. Hit up iTunes. Give us a review. The good, the bad, the indifferent, whatever you want. We want to take over iTunes. They still don't show us the love we deserve. Yo, all soft ass I Am Rappaport stereo podcast t-shirts are available at districtlines.com forward slash I Am Rappaport. We got the five star stereo podcast tee, the I Am Rappaport stereo podcast zip up and pullover hoodies, the full Iverson t-shirt, the Stickman t-shirt collection, the I Don't Fact Check, the hard body karate t-shirt for men and women. Go to districtlines.com forward slash I am Rappaport. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. All right. <sighs> Enough with the football. Yeah. Enough with the fucking Patriots. Enough with that fucking fat 
Matt Patricia, whatever. I got my eyes on him. Matt Patricia, Mr. 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 I don't shave. I got a I got a pencil in your ear. Well, why is your pencil in your ear? You're never using it. Matt Patricia, <laughs> the defensive coordinator. Hey, they won. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> hey, hey you know, it was a tough weekend because also last weekend the Cavaliers came came sauntering back into Madison Square Garden after the 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 bottle flipping massacre of 2016. Last time the Cavaliers played the, the Knicks at the Garden, uh, when, when they were up by 30 points, LeBron and co., they were doing the bottle flip challenge on the court. At one point, Tristan Thompson dove after a bottle that LeBron James flipped. He dove after it. He dove <laughs> after it like fucking Khloe Kardashian was on fire. On the All court. Right. And speaking of the Kardashians, did, 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 did you see um, Kylie Jenner? No, what what happened now? She she's got a clothing line called Thick. Oh, what? like like you know like thick like you know like thick girls. Oh, she's thick. It, it, explain explain what thick is it, it, the, the terminology. How it, Kylie Jenner has no business Serena. using that term. Yeah, like that's that's it. Like yeah, she's like Kylie Jenner's thick. Like she's thick. Right, right. Explain Serena that term. Williams. Serena, I, I would. You could just. Serena Williams is thick. That that body type is what we would call thick, toned. But usually it's like a a bigger a bigger woman, like you know, but kind of toned and everything. So it's, you get you get the title thick. Now, this uh, everything about this woman is is manufactured. Like she got the, the the lips to look like the black girl's lips, the ass, the fake ass to to make it appear. Like, like she's she's mimicking black. I mean, you know, black women shape their lips, their hips. It's obvious. So, black women are thick. Some black women are thick. Of course, she's gonna jump on that. This is this is what they're doing. Yeah, and you're not thick, Kylie by, Jenner, by, by anyone's uh, imagination. This this woman is made up. <laughs> it's it's like it's like fake. Yeah. They instead of saying instead of the clothing brand being called thick, it should be called fake. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, so the the Cavaliers came back into the garden, and I was expecting. This is in my head. No one else seems to be on board with what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Knicks are going to play hard, and if they don't play hard, they're going to turn it into a fucking war. The last time they came into the garden, they're flipping bottles. They're having a good old time. They blew us out. And I'm thinking, no, nah, there's, there's no fucking way. There's no way they're going to let them do it. Sure enough, they're up 20 points before the first half is over. And then to top it all off, Richard Jefferson, who doesn't seem to be able to uh, 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 grow facial hair. Do you ever notice this? Yeah, yeah, he don't. Yeah, he can't do it. He has no facial hair, and he's like almost 40 years old. He looks like shit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. RJ. (laughs) Fucking RJ. He looks like shit. (laughs) Why don't you grow a beard or like your shit? What's oh no, no, that's for the white girls. You got to be clean shaven. Okay, thanks for that little piece of advice. T- uh, no, no, Tiki Barber, no, they're all the guys, man. Right, OJ Simpson. Have goatees. Right. <laughs> At one point during during the, like the top of the fourth quarter, when 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 the Knicks were down twenty points. At one point, the Knicks got it into single digits. I, I will say that, but it was never like. They were going to come back. I, 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 I never felt like they were going to come back. Richard Jefferson hard fouled. Now, he didn't close on him, but he clearly gave a hard, deliberate foul to somebody on the Knicks. I can't remember who it was. And nobody did a fucking thing. Now, you say, Rap, what, what do you really want him to do? You want him to start a fight? No, but you're losing by 20. The last time these cocksuckers came into Madison Square Garden, I don't give a fuck what you say. Madison Square Garden is the world's most famous arena, period. You're up by 20, and this fucking guy who can't even grow a mustache is giving out hard fouls, and you don't do shit? This is why this team, this is why the Knicks are fucked, man. Yo, they booing Melo, and and, and, yo, I I don't like the booing of Melo. This guy did. He's played his heart when he was here in New York. He never. He's just not a good defender. He's not one of those special dudes, man. And 
they shouldn't be booing him, man. No, I agree, and I know you 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 you've broke you've broken Carmelo's balls uh, over the years. So I, I yeah. agree. you've been hard on coming. I agree they shouldn't boo him. It's not his yeah. fault. Exactly, man. It's and, it's and, a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing with the New York Knicks. We are in deep shit, man. Yeah. We are and in it, deep shit. We got this fucking guy, Richard Jefferson, who's 46, with no facial hair, giving out hard fouls when they're up by 20, and nobody does damn. shit? Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, he punking the whole crew. Richard Jefferson punking the crew. Richard fucking <laughs> Jefferson is punking the whole team, and nobody's doing shit. Come damn. on, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. All right, Miles, yeah. please, please cue the sick fuck of the week music. This award is earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. This guy is really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fucked the dog? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What sick fuck? The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did what? No. 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 Sick Fuck of the Week is an award that is earned, not given. Once again, it is an award that is earned, not given. If you've never listened to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, we give this award weekly. Sometimes we give two, three, four, even five sick fucks in one week. Florida woman. (laughs) Jacksonville, Florida. Recorded herself performing oral sex inside the courthouse in Jacksonville, Florida. A Florida woman recorded herself given that dome. Skull? That brain. Inside a courthouse. Just before she was about to face a judge on drug-related charges. And she posted the video. Hey, this is this is a sick fuck. This is a truly, truly, truly sick fuck. They're, like it's sometimes the award is just it's just clear. Who should we give it to? Boom. Exactly. You, you, you got you can't have your fucking wits about you if you're given brain, uh, skull, uh, top, dome. If you're doing mic checks inside the courthouse before you go to see the judge. The second sick fuck of the week, a pastor, a pastor, Jermaine Simmons of Florida. Sorry, my mom lives down in Florida. I have nothing against the great state of Florida. Just happens to be the place where a lot of sick fucks of the week are born and bred. He got caught sleeping with a man's wife naked. And started running down the street, butt ass naked. Shout out to Reverend O. Jermaine Simmons Sr. It's a married man. He didn't give a fuck. Uh, uh, anyway, th- this gentleman, uh, uh, Pastor Simmons, was uh, married uh, 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 with one son. And, and the dude that caught him... Uh, Freaking off with his wife. He didn't give a fuck that this was a, a man of God. He chased money down the street. Uh, butt ass. Mm. Um, man. Moody, I give the form to you. Do, do you happen to have any sick fucks of the week? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, in New Jersey, mm. you know, two guys were arrested and charged with lewd behavior. But check what they did. Oh. These, these two guys went to a bed, bath, and beyond. And you know how they have beds, you know, displays. So they, these two dudes was getting down on the display in, in, in a regular mall store. (laughs) In the Bed Bath & Beyond? Yeah, two dudes. Lock them up. And, and one of the dudes had crabs, so they had to fumigate the whole area. And, and, you know, they had the, the cops and all that. This is in Clifton, New Jersey. Jesus Christ. What kind of fucking animals are these, man? Yo, yo. Imagine you would money gaping money out in, in, in the mall right at whoa, the bed. Whoa, 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 <laughs> my man, my man, my man. Uh, how do you know he was uh, gaping him out? Hey, it said, it said uh, they engage in a sex act on the, on a display. 
two dudes. Jesus Christ. Uh, that's uh, the sick fucks of the week. Uh, uh, sorry if you offended anybody with, with these sick fucks. This is an award who, once again, that is earned, uh, not given. Yeah. It is earned, earned. Uh, not given. Um, yeah, you know, we're going to be rocking in New Orleans over All Star break. February 18th. Moody, have you ever been to New Orleans? Yes, I've been there. I like and I like the New Orleans, man. Yeah, me too, man. We're going to be rocking at the world famous, legendary, iconic Joy Theater in New Orleans, February 18th at 5:30 p.m. All Star Weekend. I know we got a lot of fans down south. Yes. We're coming in live and hot for the Big Easy for NBA All Star Weekend. Tickets are available at www.iamrappaporttour.com or www.thejoytheater.com. You know we're doing the damn thing. You know our, our, our live shows are legendary. The world yes. tour continues in 2017. Please, if you're down there, come, come mess with us, man. It ain't going to be no bougie NBA-sanctioned party. Okay, because nope. I've been to all those parties. They get real, real bougie real, real quick. <laughs> this is the I Am Rapport Podcast, and we'll be right back. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. I see uh, Coach K banned his own players from the locker room and from wearing Duke gear because they lost a few games. So they couldn't wear none of the shorts and all that. Is that Uh, true? Yeah. Why? And I was because they weren't playing up to Duke's standards. Because he was in a hospital. I like that. Listen, I don't like all that bum shit. That's a bum shit, man. Break it down. So these guys, these players who bring in 50 million to the Duke's basketball and this supports all other non-revenue producing sports are now banned from their own locker room and can't wear duke gear but but we say we say that these coaches let these guys get away with murder they don't discipline them yo you guys i i i respect that it's like yo if you're playing for the riverside church or gauchos and yo you ain't shit yo take that jacket off duke the fuck is you doing no this is but this is a lot of money involved and i think you know where I stand on that? I'm saying these guys are supposed to be paid. They're, right. You're not supposed. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they're like not. They br- we don't want to beat a dead horse. They're fucking not being paid. They sh- I'm they just should saying, be. as far as discipline, maybe they're not practicing hard. Duke's been all fucked up. You got your boy. What's his name? Grayson Allen. He's a wild card. I said I liked him though. I like he that he be. punches and kicks people when he plays. I have no, no he problem should be. with it. He should be kicked out of the uh, the whole NCAA. He's been tripping players for years. Uh, this is this is Duke basketball. You you trying to hurt motherfuckers eh, out there? It's a what? Hey, you, no one's no one's gotten hurt yet. Yo, they make yo. a big deal out of this. Hey, they, what about Michael Graham? They they fucking thought he was a uh, son of Sam out there, right? Yeah. But this guy, <laughs> he's tripping motherfuckers. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But I think it's it, 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 there's probably more to it than meets the eye. I understand the discipline, but don't take it too far, man. Just realize the, these guys pay your salary. Eh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, how, how would you, how would you feel coming to work and not being paid? That would fucking suck. That <laughs> would fucking suck because I barely yeah, you work on the set. Anyway. You on the set. You you doing your acting shit, and motherfuckers <laughs> ain't giving you nothing. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yo, Saturday Night Live. I I, I like what you're doing. They got their fucking foot on the gas. And, and now, not only do they have uh, Alec Baldwin grabbing Trump by the Yussi every week, now they're doing a Sean Spicer impression, and they got Melissa McCarthy doing an impression of him, and she, she did it good. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing that's good about it is that the presidential cabinet watches Saturday Night Live, and it's driving them nuts, and I know... I know he, he Sean Spicer. First of all, he said that he the, the show needs to slow down, uh, 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 you know, and pull back, dial it back on his portrayal of him. You know, he, he said that he thought some of it was funny, but some of it was mean. Sean Spicer, what the fuck you know about comedy, Duke? <laughs> 
Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, you you don't you don't get to say what Saturday Night Live does or doesn't do and what's funny or not funny. You you just try to keep your weight down and stay healthy. Cause you got four young long years. You know how they talk about how Trump uh, how they talk about how presidents they 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 lo- they love to point out how Obama's hair grayed and yeah. and, and he he got wrinkles on his skin. Wait till you see. First of all, this guy Sean Spicer probably won't even make it the full four years. He'll get fired. Trump will fire his ass. But wait till you see what this frumpy fat fuck looks like in four years. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. Kanye West has deleted oh. all his pro Trump tweets because now all of a sudden he said, you know, I'm not with that. It's too late, buddy. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? A new record coming out? It's too You're late. not fooling anybody, Duke. You fucking yeah. nut job. Yeah, what, what, going, they, going, they give him some. They, and he didn't say it himself. Like it was just sort of put out there by TMZ or, or one of these things that he. You, why you delete all your Trump shit? What, what, all of a sudden, you, you're yeah. not with that. Why? Tell me why. Because because he didn't he didn't put you down. He said they want real Americans. And you go up there talking some multicultural shit. I, I, I'm, I'm coming up to see Trump so I can see uh, talk about multicultural issues. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, he's not trying to about, hear any of that. You don't want you, you 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 don't want to talk about black people issues, right? Is that what Kanye said? <laughs> no, yeah, I want to go. I'm going to Trump to talk about multicultural issues. <laughs> Yo. This guy is nuts, man. And and Yo. and and, and they're, they're they're thinking about removing Trump's uh, Walk of Fame star because every single day it's getting defamed. People are pissing on it. Apparently, someone took a shit on it. Don't point Damn. the finger at me. Don't point the finger at me. Yeah, I I, yeah, I don't prob- do that. I I I do my shit in back alleys and on freeways. I don't, I don't I, and I do it only when necessary. So please don't point the finger at me. But apparently, they they might just remove it. Just because it's causing too much chaos up there. Yeah, I understand. Um, what what else you got, Mister Moody? I want to say about my man T.O. They jerking my man, and it's making the whole. Well, what's a Hall of Fame? It's Terrell making Owens. the. It's making the whole Hall of Fame look ridiculous. How are you going to have the number two, the best receiver, behind Jerry Rice, not get in? I, I hear you, it's man. It's a personal shit. It's personal shit with this dude. Yeah. Because, because obviously the players on the field, you got a lot of bad motherfuckers in that, that Hall of Fame. You got racists in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yo, you can't be like holding him to some, some standard, your standard. Yo, it's about play. That dude was good. He's the number two receiver, three in a lot of categories of all time. And you're going to front on him like, Come on, you're making yourself look stupid, yo. I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, I, I like T.O. I've always liked T.O. You know, I like his he's play. Been cool That's what I'm me. talking about. His play. No, I know. He 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 brought a lot of it on himself, but he's also, you know, I, he's had some some bumps, man. Some some bullshits happened to him. He, you know, he had some some bad luck with some financial advice and shit. And right. T.O. is a good dude. He should absolutely be in the Hall of Fame, man. I I, yeah. I I totally agree. I think it's some I think it's some bullshit. I don't even know enough about the Hall of Fame or or how it works or why they would do that. Why they're taking personal stuff and 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 airing them out. But that that has to do with his you know what they deemed his his behavior is not Hall of Fame ish. Yeah, yeah. They take the racist motherfuckers out from the twenties and thirties. Get them motherfuckers out. Hey, what do you think about this? I don't care about these award shows. You, you, we've talked about them. Before, the Oscars, the Emmys, I think that they're not as important as uh, you know as the fans would think them to be. But but they are always nice if you get nominated or if you win. And now you got all these fucking guys again: Kanye, Bieber, mm, about- Drake, a handful of these guys. They they they, they want to have this unofficial boycott of the Grammys. They say the the, the Grammys are not relevant. Why are they not relevant now? Because you have right. twenty of them, right? <laughs> right. You can't, they Kanye. Them the, the Grammys are not relevant now because you have twenty fucking five of them. Marvin Gaye won one while he was alive, right? One, and you have twenty five of them, and they're not relevant because you use it as a fucking doorstop. Yeah. And Justin Bieber and Drake, the, the, these awards aren't relevant because you didn't get nominated. Uh, yo, you know how many Grammys uh, Lord Finesse has? 
You know how many Shit, Grammys uh, Pete Rock and CL Smooth have? Word. You should be ashamed of yourself, boy. You should be happy every single time you get acknowledged. If you whether you win or you don't, so you disrespect the other artists. De La Soul got nominated for for a record this year, Kanye West. Without De La Soul, Drake, Kanye West, you wouldn't be doing this shit. You should show up just to to show them the respect. Yeah, and, and they want to yeah. boycott the Grammys because because they say they're not relevant or they didn't get the amount of nominations that they think they should have got. Is this is some bullshit, dudes, man. man. That's so what you, you're not going to show up to see De La Soul get nominated? You're not going to show up to see Remy Ma? These people got nominated. Remy Ma is bad. I like She's dope. Yeah, <laughs> so th- these guys are like, oh, it's not relevant. Maybe maybe your music is what's not relevant. Maybe maybe your music, you'll be lucky in, in, in 10, 15 years if people are thinking about you. And Word. when they give you like a, a Lifetime Achievement Award, you motherfuckers will be jumping at the opportunity to get it. Right. The Grammys, yeah. I agree with what Chuck D said. Who gives a fuck about a goddamn Grammy? <laughs> but but it's all good once you won a bunch of them. Yeah, he won a lot, man. It's like, it's like candy, little candy to him. Yeah, Kanye West is like, like fucking 20 Grammys. Yeah. I think that's some bullshit, man. You guys are going to... You don't think De La Soul is going to show up to get... They've been doing this shit for 20-something years. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see that uh, Odell was making those catches out from the plane? They were dropping the, the shit out of the plane. And the he, drones. He, yeah. But he can't, he couldn't catch the little outs that Eli was throwing when we needed the first down. He couldn't do that, mm-hmm. but he could catch a ball out of the plane. So what? Yeah, I don't give when a we fuck ne- about the drone catches. When we needed you to make the, the third down, the touchdown catch, Mr. Circus Catch couldn't do it. He's living off of that one-handed catch from fucking three years ago. How, how, how did you think he did as a pregame broadcaster uh, during the Super Bowl? I thought it was fucking Jermaine Stewart from, uh, you know, from the time. Hmm. 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 You know that guy? <laughs> yeah, I know who it is. Oh. That's who he looked like. I can't take him serious. I can't take a guy like that serious on television. I'm sorry. I hear you. I hear you. You got the, the Chuck Daly pompadour. You look crazy, man. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, what else you got, Mr. Moody? I want to give a shout out to Taraji P. Henson and the other fine actresses that was in that, that movie, Hidden Figures. I saw that. Yo, that I suggest people, you know, See that that movie if they haven't seen it. Good Love shit, that movie. man. Really, really good I, film. And, and, and a black history that I, who I pride, I pride myself on kind of knowing about my my history, had no idea, and it's it's fucked up that I didn't know, and it's fucked up that the schools didn't didn't uh, bring that to our attention. Word, I hear you, no doubt. All right, it's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Again, we're gonna be in New Orleans. February 18th, the world tour continues uh, at the Joy Theater. Tickets are available at www.iamrapportour.com. We're doing the damn thing. I'll say it one more time, one last time. Congratulations to the New England Patriots. Uh, and uh, what can I say? It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We're done. You out, Moody? Out, out, man. Peace.